Hi guys, this is Taylor and I'm here today with my April wrap up. April was much more of a regular month for me reading wise. Outside of reading it was very stressful but we're not going to talk about that today. I read four books this month and I gotta say I'm still waiting to be completely blown away by something this year. It's uh, It did not happen for me in April. We are coming in very hot though because the very first book that I read in April was The State of Affairs Rethinking Infidelity by Esther Perel. This is a modern examination of infidelity. It's um, much more than like a self-help book that someone might read if they were affected by infidelity. It really goes deep into the like cultural conversation surrounding affairs and I'm very interested in relationship structures so I was really excited to get into this one. I guess we'll talk about my positives first because for the most part this is an amazing book. It's almost like every single line was quotable. It honestly seemed like every couple of lines I would have a genuine revelation about the way that I view relationships. You just get the sense that this is an incredibly well edited book as well. It just seems like every piece of information fit perfectly exactly where it was. And honestly, for a good long minute there, this was my best book of 2019. Like, far and away, no question about it. What happened was, um, Towards the end of the book, there was just this one chapter that I completely disagreed with. And honestly, it was really surprising to, you know, agree wholeheartedly with like 95% of the book and then completely disagree with this one chapter, but that's what happened. This is still a great book and everything positive that I said about it still stands, but I did end up knocking it down a star and I gave this one four stars. The next book I read in April I actually placed a hold on the audiobook like months and months ago and just forgot about it and then it came in in April unexpectedly and I was like all right this is happening now. It really wasn't part of the plan but I ended up reading Here I Am by Jonathan Safran Foer. So I had given five stars to both of his fiction novels before this one but I had also heard that this one just isn't quite as good. I had also attempted to read this when it first came out in 2016 and failed almost immediately so enter audiobook. This is essentially about a Jewish family living around Washington DC and kind of coming apart at the seams at the same time that a historic devastating earthquake strikes the Middle East and particularly affects Israel. So I have to agree that this one just doesn't quite come together as well as his other books. I just think that there's a lot that Jonathan Safran Foer does really well and there's a lot about his writing style that's very unique and captivating. I just also think that there is a lot in here that is um, worthy of an eye roll or two and I think it is more prominent in this book than his other ones. So I gave this one about a 3 or 3.5 rating. Um, I'm definitely glad to have tackled it finally, but it's uh, it's not my favorite of his by a long shot. So then I ended up picking up What We Were Promised by Lucy Tan. This one is a multiple perspective novel that follows a group of interconnected people living in Shanghai. We follow a very wealthy family living in luxury suites and one of their housekeepers who is actually accused of stealing one of the bracelets of the mother of the family and this ends up stirring up family secrets. One of the things that initially drew me to this novel was honestly the cover and this beautiful skyline scene and that's actually one of the aspects that I think this book did really well. I wanted to read about what it's like living in a massive city like Shanghai and especially at different uh, like economic levels and that's something that this book really delivered with. Other than that I didn't get a whole lot out of this book unfortunately. I found it pretty slow and um, there's kind of this one plot point that we're slowly making our way towards throughout the entire book and even when it finally happened it, it wasn't really satisfying, it didn't really stir up a whole lot of emotion. I would say that this book is a little bit quiet and maybe if I had gone in with a different expectation and expected a little bit more of a slow burn, 
um, I might have come out with a different opinion of it. I gave this one three stars. I definitely enjoyed it, but I didn't find it very memorable, I guess. And the last book I read in April ended up being Crossing by Pai Tim Statovsi. This was one of my most anticipated releases of 2019, and it definitely ended up being my favorite fiction book of April. This follows a young Albanian man as he becomes a refugee and attempts to flee Albania with his male best friend, whom he is in love with. He actually ends up fleeing to several countries, including Italy, Finland, Spain, the United States, there might be one more. And in his effort to escape everything about himself, escape the fact that he is Albanian, he actually becomes something of a pathological liar, or at least that's how I read it. I really enjoyed this one. It contains elements of Albanian folklore, and I thought it thematically brought everything together really well. I also really liked the fact that our main character is so amorphous almost. He doesn't really identify as anything in terms of nationality or sexuality or even gender, and I thought that was really interesting given the context of the story. I did think it was quite repetitive in terms of the plot and the countries that end up being visited. They all just kind of pan out the same way. I would issue a content warning for sexual assault and also just say that if you are someone who prefers all of their main characters to be pretty likable, then this probably isn't for you either. But I think overall I would give this one about a 3.75. Um, I don't usually get that specific, but there it is. So that was my April. Definitely let me know what you ended up getting to this month. And thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a great day, and I'll see you soon. Bye!